This is a baby avocado tree. Someday, it'll grow big, like its brothers and sisters here in this grove. And it will produce delicious avocados. Every year, about four billion of these avocados are grown in groves just like this one all around North America. But recently, something amazing has happened. There's been a boom in backyard gardening and more and more people want to grow these at home for their own consumption. Let me show you the process we follow to grow our trees. And if you pay attention and do what I do, you'll be growing beautiful avocados in about three to four years. Just like you, I gotta start out with a seed. Let's go get my seeds. Now I'm gonna collect my seeds differently than you collect yours, right? You're gonna go to the market or you're gonna go somewhere, eat an avocado, you're gonna set the seed aside. Me, I grow them commercially. And when I fill my orders, I fill them here inside this garage. When I come upon an avocado that I don't want to sell to someone, maybe, a, maybe I pick it and I didn't notice like a squirrel has eaten it a little bit or it's just so banged up and messed up, I just discard it. I throw it in my little bucket here. And then I just let them sit. Ah, here's what I was looking for. Yes, the last one. Okay, I had that bucket of essentially fermenting avocados. And every now and then, you get one that'll start to sprout. Before I even put them in the ground, look at While he was in the pile with all his brothers and sisters, he started to form these roots. And look at here, here's the shoot of an avocado tree. And I point this out because I hear this a lot from people. They'll say, oh, I, I threw an avocado pit or I threw half an avocado out in my compost pile. And when I went out a couple months later and there was a little tree growing, well, that'll happen sometimes. That's how resilient and robust these avocado seeds are. Every single one of these seeds is genetically unique. They will grow to a unique tree and they will produce a distinct and different avocado. Now remember, in order to get a Monroe avocado, I need to plant a seed, but I also need to take a cutting from a Monroe tree, such as this one. But before I can take a clipping and graft it, I need a seedling that I can graft onto. And that happens in the shade house. To get started, you will need a one gallon pot, potting soil, whatever the cheapest stuff you can get at the garden center is, nothing special. Fertilizer, and avocado seed. There's a reason I want you to use a one gallon pot. I don't want you to use something small like a red solo cup, and I don't want you to go real big like this seven gallon pot here or in a big clay pot on your floor. We want to start these things out in a manageable small pot so you can move it around easily. It takes a lot less water to water a plant in a one gallon pot than it does in a seven gallon pot. And why not something small like a red solo cup? Well, remember, it's not just about what's happening above the surface. In fact, I would argue early on, it's more about what's happening happening below the surface. You want these roots to grow, you want them to spread out, you want them to flourish. And to do that, they need room. Now let's talk about our soil. Just a second ago, I told you, all you need is regular old potting soil. Any mix, whatever you can get cheapest at the garden center. The reason we use potting soil is because of its consistency. Potting soil is like spongy. See that? It's nice, it's loose, it's spongy. And it allows these little hair-like roots to grow and to flourish. If this was a, was a tightly packed kind of soil, it would be harder for the roots to grow. It also holds moisture, but allows for drainage. So I want you to fill your one gallon pot about halfway with whatever potting soil you bought at the garden center. Then use a very small amount. In fact, if you want to measure it, maybe a tablespoon of 666 blend fertilizer. That's it. Fertilizers are categorized by the percentages of their nutrients. So a 666 blend fertilizer means that you've got a fertilizer with 6% nitrogen, 6% potassium, and 6% phosphorus. The remaining 82% is filler. 
And if you use too much of this stuff or put it too close to the seeds, it'll actually burn your, your little baby roots. So you, you only want to use a little bit in the soil. Now we're ready to plant our seed. We have a one gallon pot. We have a gallon's worth of potting soil in there with just a little bit of 666 blend fertilizer. And all we're going to do is make a little indentation like this. There's an orientation for the seed. You have to look for the belly button. So every seed's going to have a either a rounded or pointed top and it's going to have an indentation at the bottom like this. <laughs> like this little belly button. Belly button goes down. All you do is find that little belly button part, put it facing downward, screw your your seed in there till about one third of it, maybe one fourth, is showing from the top. And that's it. That's a planted avocado seed. I want you to water this every other day. But depending on where you live, it may be a more damp atmosphere, it may be more arid. You just want to go out and take a little little pinch of soil maybe every other day. Like right now this soil feels kind of damp, so I know I can wait till tomorrow to water this. If you live somewhere it's dry, you might need to water every other day. If you live somewhere where it's really moist, uh, the air has a lot of humidity in it, you might need to water every third day or even every fourth day. But remember, you're only in a one gallon pot and it's going to drain, so you will need to water frequently, but you don't want to water too much. And store it somewhere that gets partial sunlight. Your seed will immediately start to grow. But you won't see anything because it's going to grow the roots first. Before your seed can grow up, it's got to grow down and out because these roots are what extract the nutrients and water from the soil. And those nutrients are used to create energy and that energy is used to create the rest of the tree. So just because you think your tree isn't growing, it is. And a lot of people don't know this, but if you're standing underneath a tree, the root system beneath you extends as far, if not further, than the canopy of the tree above you. Half the tree is under the ground. Now eventually, you'll start to see a little sprout coming out the top. You'll see a little, you'll see a little sprout poking through. Resist the urge to help it. Resist the urge to fuss with your tree. Just let Mother Nature do its thing. You see here we have the root system and then in this crack you can see the stalk coming through which is going to grow tall. Continue with the partial sunlight. Continue with the every other day or every third or fourth day waterings. And every 60 days I want you to give it a little more of this 6-6 six, six fertilizer but let me show you how. Remember just at this line here you've got all these little hair like roots starting to grow. We don't want to burn them with fertilizer. So every 60 days just take a little spoon or a knife or something and just go around the edge of your pot. Don't go crazy. Remember this is just a one gallon. You only got one gallon of soil in there. You don't need a lot of fertilizer. Just a maybe a spoonful or two little spoonfuls like that. Eventually you'll get what looks like a tree. It'll have a stem or a trunk and leaves and maybe even start to have little branches. The next thing I want you to do is use a prop stick. Just get yourself a little piece of bamboo or something, even one of those paint stirrers and fasten your, fasten your stem to it so that your tree grows straight. I recommend you go out and buy a roll of grafting tape because you're going to be using it later when you graft the tree anyhow and use that grafting tape to just fasten the tree To the prop stick. Man, I wish you were here with me right now. I got these beautiful orchids flowering right behind me. My neighbor's playing some, some mariachi. I don't know if you could hear it. They're over there slaughtering a pig, actually. <laughs> it's just really a great way to live life. But anyways, back to your avocado tree. So a few months will go by and you now have a choice to make. You can choose to grow this tree from seed and it'll take about 10 to 12 years to produce fruit. If, if that's the route you're going to go, you're, you'll wait your 10 to 12 years, you'll eventually get a piece of fruit, you'll taste it. Might be delicious, might be disgusting, might be so-so. But if that's the route you want to go, then you're never going to graft this tree, but you will need to prune it. So every couple of months, you'll see a new horn of growth coming out the top. I'm going to ask you to just take your fingers and pinch that growth off. And I'm not sure why, but that tells your tree that it's having a tough time growing upward, so it's time to start growing outward. That will thicken the stem, and it will also encourage branch growth, lateral growth. 
periodically you will also need to upgrade to bigger and bigger pots like this three gallon and eventually a seven gallon because remember it's not just above the ground you are growing an organism beneath the ground also what you can't see and this root system wants to go down this root system wants to go out and in order to be big enough down below the surface to support a big tree up above it needs space to expand also one gallon of potting soil with a little bit of fertilizer isn't enough nutrients to support a bigger tree like say this seven gallon tree right here right eventually after you've grown it for a while in a seven gallon pot and it's maybe thigh high or waist high that's probably a good time to get it in the ground at that point your tree will be somewhere between three and four years old which means you've got six to eight years till it starts to produce fruit at that point you'll taste the fruit you'll see if you hit the lottery you might have a delicious fruit you might have a bland fruit you might have a yucky disgusting fruit that not even your dog would eat if on the other hand you want the sure thing you love a Hass avocado and you want to grow Hass avocados in your backyard then you got to get yourself a Hass avocado cutting now most people don't know this but there's about 900 named varieties of avocado as I said earlier the one I'm holding here is a Monroe the one you're probably familiar with is the Haas that's the little dark green or black one you get at the supermarket that's 95 percent of the avocados consumed in America but there's 900 other varieties out there they grow long and slender short and fat round oblong egg shaped they range in color from green to purple to black to even red and they offer a wide variety of flavors first things first you got to go to the right tree remember we are grafting a Monroe avocado so I got to go to a Monroe tree and I have to find a good candidate for a clipping I've got two criteria right now number one remember the stem is a little bit narrow the diameter on that seedling is a little bit narrow so I need to find a cutting where the diameter of the cutting matches the diameter of my seedling so this one looks pretty good let me just give you an example look at the relative diameters between these two cuttings this one here is a lot more narrow than this one here see the difference this is a lot thicker this one will not fit on our seedling this one has a chance for a fit but I don't really like it I just picked it for the example so again criteria number one is the diameter of the stem criteria number two I need to make sure that the flower hasn't opened yet and if we look at this guy look at that flower on top there that's already opened up I want to get one where there's just a little bit of a nub a little bit of a, a horn pushing out there this guy's already started to, to open so this guy also not a good candidate but this one right here going by eye the diameter looks about right and if we look here at the flower it hasn't opened yet it might be just about starting to open but I can use that one I'm gonna strip it of its leaves let's go back to the shade house here we are back in the shade house and as you could see this cutting we took out in the grove is a lot more in line it matches a lot more the diameter of our seedling because remember what we want to do is insert the cutting into our seedling just as was done here you see that there's the cut and there's the insertion the first thing we need to do is prepare our rootstock so we're gonna go in just a little bit off center make our cut nice and slow and very carefully and here you could see we have a split in our rootstock now it's time to prepare the budwood here you see we've made our wedge look there's one side another side and it's this green line right here along the bark that we want to match up with the edge of the bark of our rootstock so now we come back to our rootstock and I could see that yeah my cutting or my scion is a tad wider but not too bad so I'm gonna make it flush on the 
on the right side here. It's going to be sticking out a little bit on the left. And the important part when wrapping this up is that you keep you keep the edges flush. So I want to keep the the edge of my budwood, the edge of my scion flush with the edge of my rootstock. And just come around, wrap it up nice. And here you see a beautiful grafted avocado tree. And I'll take care of this just like we did the seedling. I'll keep it in partial sunlight, which for me means this shade house. Every 60 days I'll go around the edge with the fertilizer like I showed you and I'll water it. Here I'll water it every other day. Every now and then I'll skip a day. We're going into our dry season here so I'll be watering this guy every other day. And as long as I see green, I'll know it's alive. Eventually, when the graft takes, it'll start to push out new growth like this one did. See, here's the cutting and then here's the new growth pushing out of the top. And just like with the seedling, I'll eventually put it in a three gallon pot. Then I'll up it to a seven gallon pot, and then at some point it'll be ready to go out into my grove to replace a tree that's either died or beyond its usefulness. I encourage everyone who's watched this video to try this. You could have a tree planted within the hour. Drive down to Home Depot or your local garden center and get yourself the soil fertilizer and pot. Then stop at the grocery store on your way home, grab an avocado and you got yourself a seed. Eventually you'll get your first fruit and the satisfaction of eating food that you produced yourself is unlike any other satisfaction you'll ever feel. The security you get from knowing that you could provide sustenance for yourself and your family is incredible. And the sense of pride knowing that something you ate, which produced what's typically seen as waste, you take that waste, you stick it in a pot, eventually you take what that pot grows, like this guy here, dig a hole and stick it in the planet and you're connecting the planet earth and the sun because the roots of this tree dig into the earth and take the nutrients out of the earth and the leaves open up to the sun and take energy from the sun and create the food that you're going to use to feed yourself and your family and if you want to look really good while you're doing that go to guacfarm.com and get yourself one of these sleepy lizard t-shirts G-U-A-C-F-A-R-M dot com. I always got the t-shirts. I always have our stickers. When avocados are in season, I sell our avocados out there. And sometimes, when I have trees in stock, I also sell trees. So before you run out to get the stuff you need to plant your first tree, go to guacfarm.com, and I will see you on the next video.